Hello, Commanders, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Journey Across the Galaxy. We are continuing on our way towards Beagle Point at the very far end of the galaxy, having already crossed through the center uh, from the bubble back over here on our way towards this uh, area over here where Beagle Point is located. Go ahead and get off the ground as we uh, go through our standard kind of spiel, trying to explain to any of the new uh, viewers what it is that's going on here. Uh, we are trying to level up our exobiology and uh, just find as much money as we can along the way so that hopefully we can get to the point, excuse me, so hopefully we can get to the point where we can afford a fleet carrier and then kind of just kind of take up per permanent residence out into the black. So that's kind of what we're doing to accomplish that. We kind of have a fairly repetitious sequence of events that we do. We hop into the next system as we're doing right now. We'll check out the system map to see if there are any... Um, our, if, the, if our work is kind of already done for us by other explorers. And then after that, we'll use the full spectrum system scanner to determine if there are any high value planets and um, biological signatures that are worth going to scan. So that's kind of uh, what we're doing in the game. But I also typically try to find something to talk about or just, you know, yammer on about for a good 20 minutes is 20 to 30 minutes. Uh, just to hopefully keep it interesting. Uh, my topic for today is holy crap. <laughs> <laughs> we hit a thousand subscribers out of nowhere. Uh, you know, been hovering. I don't want to say been hovering. We've we've had a steady a steady climb in subscribers over the past you know few months. Uh, but you know, yesterday I looked at my subscriber count and it was at like 881. Ooh, single biology. We well, at least two, um, unless we're towards the end of an episode. Um, I looked at my subscriber count last night. Another single biology. Ooh. And it was at like 881. And then I woke up this morning and it was at 1061. So I had I had over uh, over two, I think I ran around 200 people just decide all of a sudden out of nowhere to subscribe to the channel. And it pushed us over the thousand subscriber mark. So I am super jazzed because I have now unlocked full monetization for my channel. Which means that unfortunately for those of you who don't have YouTube premium or YouTube uh, whatever memberships, uh, that's, that's you know, they're gonna have ads in front of your face. I apologize for that. It's kind of the model, the financial model that YouTube uses, and I'm I'm just I'm just living. They, it's their world. I'm just living in it. <laughs> so sorry if you're now having to watch this and ads are popping up. I don't know. Maybe they were popping up before, and I just wasn't getting paid for it. I don't really know how all of that works. All I do know is that I am now at the point where subscriber count isn't necessarily the primary driver of everything that I do. I mean, obviously, I want to see my channel continue to grow and have more and more people subscribe to the channel and follow along with everything that's going on. But realistically, um, the part that matters the most now is just, you know, how many views am I getting? How much watch time am I getting? How many ads are being? offered up to my viewers so that I can start getting paid through it. You know, that's kind of how YouTube works. And while I'm personally not a big fan of ads myself, that's the model that we live with and that's what we have to kind of do. So a sincere apology to those of you who uh, hate ads and now you have to watch my content and it has ads in it. But uh, if I want to get paid, I got to I got to do everything I can to do that to get that to get that money flowing in. Uh, it's the world we live in. Maybe one day we'll get to the point where money is no longer a thing and uh, we won't have to resort to things like this. But for now, this is what we got. So anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and continue scanning all of this stuff. Hopefully we can find some decent biology. Just not getting lucky. This, uh, I mean, I know this is only like the second system, but I really like to find planets early on so we have plenty of time to scan once we uh, you know, get down on the planet, especially when we find some of these uh, planets that have you know, three, four, five, six sometimes bio biological signatures. I really like in the, I really like finding that kind of stuff. Still on the fence about what I'm going to do after we get to Beagle Point. I'm really glad that you guys are truly enjoying the series. I'm really glad that uh, for whatever reason you enjoy listening to me yak about random stuff. Uh, as long as that continues to be a thing that you guys are enjoying, I'm going to keep pumping out content for you. Uh, I know a lot of that depends on me continuing to be able to have things to talk about, but, uh, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I'm hoping, you know, we get to the point where the channel's growing really fast and, uh, you know, I'm quickly able to get to the point where I'm uh, making enough money to really seriously do this full time. I mean, I know getting to a thousand subscribers is the first step towards that, but 
realistically, I just I have to have enough people watching the content where the ad revenue, in addition to some of the other things like channel memberships and all that kind of stuff, is really paying the bills. I know I talk a lot on this channel about you know the various things that I'm trying to do to make money at this, you know, trying to do it full time. Uh, I try not geological too. That's not what we're looking for. I try not to be too repetitive on the subjects. I know some of you guys complain about the fact that I just I keep t I keep complaining about the same things. At least when it comes to the game, and the problem with that is there's not a problem with you guys thinking that. It's more just the problem is is that I encounter those things a lot and they irritate me. <laughs> so sometimes I'm going to be rep repetitious in some of the things that I say because I'm constantly encountering some of these irritating things. I wish that they would fix. Not much I can do about that, but uh, as far as main topics of discussion, uh, I try not to be too repetitious with that. Uh, there was just no way for me to foresee that all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I was going to have two pe 200 people overnight decide that they wanted to subscribe to the channel, which is, you know, mind-blowingly awesome. I'm truly appreciative, pr truly appreciative to all of you who decided to just pop in there, pop in there overnight and push the channel right there into full-on monetization. That's that's exactly. I've been waiting for this since I I've been waiting for this since I got serious about you know trying to make YouTube a real thing for me. Um, I've been a video game I've been a video game person my entire life, and you know I've always been I've always wanted to find a way to turn something that I have loved doing my whole life into a you know a career, not necessarily a job. I'm hoping it never turns into a job, uh, you know, and that's that's kind of a mindset thing, but it's also just a. A lot of times, especially for me, I'm the kind of person that when I get to the point where I have to do something, it's not fun anymore. <laughs> so, uh, you know, my music career, uh, another biological. Once we hit the 15 minute mark, I'll start doing I'll start doing the single biology planets. What sucks is, is that when once we hit the 15 minute mark, we'll stop running into any biology and then we're just gonna be stuck landing on a planet. But I don't want to. It's going to be it's going to be bacteria and bacteria. What's going on? Why are we? Okay, I don't know what's going on with this. Doesn't normally turn like that without me giving inputs. I think the ship is doing something. What is going on here? Okay, we need... Are we... What's going on with this? That was weird. Okay. Uh, let's move a little bit away from the star and hopefully we can find... Hopefully we can uh, get those, whatever those bodies are out from being obscured. Let's see if we can see them now. So, another single biology. These guys are killing me. Alright. Moving on to the next system. But anyways, uh, I've already lost my train of thought. That was, that was truly confusing to me, because I've never seen... I've never seen the full spectrum system scanner start twisting around like that. That was very strange. It completely blew away my entire thought process of anything I had going on in my head. So I'm kind of like, I'm still kind of trying to recover from it. But anyways, I'm, you know, I was just super excited that all of a sudden, bam, we're over a thousand. So, you know, obviously the next goal as far as subscriber count goes is 10,000. You know, that's my next milestone that I'm looking for. And then maybe after that, fifty thousand and a hundred thousand is when you get that uh, that cool silver plaque or whatever it is—the silver, the silver. It's a plaque or something like that. Obviously, I'd love to get to that, but you know, being money-minded as I am, I'm more concerned about just creating content that people watch enough that you know, ads. <laughs> Obviously, ads are a small part of any YouTube channel, though. So, you know, I definitely wanted to get to the point to where we have that in addition to everything else. But I'm hoping that I can get enough people along the ride, along on for the ride, or along for the ride, when it comes to memberships and stuff like that. Because, you know, one member, one membership is worth, you know, a lot of views. It is very outsized in its in its contribution. So, you know, those of you who have chosen to support the channel already, very appreciative of that. Hoping to get a lot more people who uh, find enough value in the content that they want to support the channel and uh, click that join button. So don't forget that that's down there. You can see the list of perks and decide if any of those are good and something you want to do. But yeah, I just, all, all I can do is just keep repeating the fact that, holy crap, 
because I was, I was I thought it was gonna be several more weeks before we hit that 1,000 subscriber mark. I've been I've been steadily averaging around you know eight to ten, maybe sometimes 12 subscribers in a day, and you know I still needed 200 subscribers. So I figured I still had a few more weeks, at least, if not a month or more, before we hit the part where you know we were gonna hit the hit hit a thousand subscribers. So just all of a sudden, I wake up, and it says a thousand subscribe uh, a thousand subscribers on there, and I'm just like, what? <laughs> all right, we're getting we're getting a lot of these single biology planets. We really need to have something that's gonna be a little bit more cool than that, because going to just find little patches of color on the ground aren't exact isn't exactly the most fun thing in the world. So we got some of those. Uh, those were asteroid belts. Still no feet, no biological features. Just another single biology feature. Come on, give us what we need. Mm, all right, moving on. Hopefully, I really want to find one that has at least two. That way we can have something that's going to be much more interesting than just a patch of color. Because that's all the bacteria ever end up looking like. I've said it before, I'll say it again. The, I thought I pressed the button. Um, the bacteria just looks like big patches of a brain texture with a different, with sometimes it has a different color. And it's super frustrating because when you look at the, uh, the bacteria on the ground, it might say red, but it still just looks gray or white or tan or whatever. Very little variation in what the bacteria looks like. So anyways, we're going to continue on, uh, continue this journey as long as you guys are along for the ride and are enjoying and providing positive feedback and, you know, uh, somebody asked me about my comments on the whole multiplayer thing and my thought process is, you know, um, I want to, if I'm going to play with other people, I want to play with other people who are invested and aligned in the same direction that I am. So for the most part, I've, I've generally avoided multiplayer on games like this because there's just so many people out there that are you know kind of jerks <laughs> so i'm you know i enjoy playing games like this by myself but at the same time if we can get a group of people together who want to go out into the black and you know come along on the ride uh, come along for the ride in the in the fleet carrier and you know we'll maybe move it once a week and just kind of wander around the galaxy trying to explore and see what we can find then uh yeah uh, anyone who wants to come along is invited, so long as you're polite about it. But first things first, we got to make enough money and actually get to that point where we can uh, have that fleet carrier. We're getting a lot of sing a lot of single, a lot of just a lot of uh, systems that have just have stars in them. That's uh, not helpful. <laughs> not very helpful at all. So we're down to 165 jumps until our next waypoint. I am kind of curious to know. I mean, once we get to within 20,000 um, light years, we'll be able to set our destination to Beagle Point. Should probably check that out in the next system, see how close we are. I don't I don't think we've gone 10,000 light years since the last time I checked, but we might as well hop into the galaxy map and just take a look. It doesn't take that long to just pop in there, type the name in, and see how far away it is. Part of me thinks that if... Uh, once we get to Beagle Point, we could make a make a side trip to Colonia before we head back to the bubble. Ideally, that would make it so that we have enough time out in space to have made the money that we need to make. But it just kind of depends. All right, let's hop into the system map here real quick. Let's type in Beagle Point. Still 29,000 light years away. So we, we're, we're a little ways. We, we need to make 9,000 more light years before we're going to be able to target that as a uh, destination. And I would imagine that's probably going to be 15,000. I'm not interested in any of those. Are we going to be able to find... Yeah, that's all the same stuff. So I don't... Yeah, I don't think we're going to be looking for anything in this one because... It seems like the only planetary bodies are these ones that are way too far away for us to mess with it. So, moving along. The amount of time it would take us to go 15, or take me, I would never drag you guys along for that ride. The amount of time it would take me to go 15,000 light seconds is just not worth it. It's better to just move on and hope that we find something in another system. Because that would be, that would literally be a good five minutes of, you know, in-system flight just to hope that we find, you know, I mean, I guess I could have just went and identified it if it was, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's, just, it's not worth it's not worth the time to fly that far. 
even for some of the more expensive stuff. Alright, now another binary star system. Let's try to keep our fuel... I've said it before, I like the fact that I don't have to worry about the heat problem, the uh, overheating in this ship when it comes to refueling. I mean, obviously, I have the biggest fuel scoop available for the ship, but just I have it tuned in such a way that I could sit in that sit in the uh, in, sit inside the scooping area indefinitely and never overheat. As long as I'm not trying to charge my frame shift drive, that would be that would cause some serious overheating. But if you time it right, you can make it so that you can start charging your drive before you leave the scooping the scooping zone, and then you know really really cut down the amount of time it takes you to jump from system to system. It just takes some practice. Okay, only five in this one. Let's see, let's see if there's anything reasonable. Come on, get out of it. Eh, it's just a gas giant. Definitely not going to be anything in a gas giant. You can't land on those. So, moving right along. So what was that? Was that uh, three stars and was it three stars and two gas giants or oh four stars and a gas giant? Okay. Three, two, Appreciate those of you who take the time to leave positive comments and let me know that you're truly enjoying the series. I try to keep. <laughs> I know, I know there's been several silences in this particular episode, and it's mostly just because I don't really have a single topic of discussion, so I have two options. I can just either keep babbling and repeating myself over and over again, which I know probably gets kind of annoying after a while, or I can stop and try to keep thinking of different things to talk about. <laughs> either way, uh, you know, it's not going to be the most optimal way of doing, doing things. Okay, so only 13 bodies in this system, so let's see if we can find something. Maybe we'll get lucky, and there will be some biological signatures here. None there. Still none there. And unfortunately, ugh, we're on the wrong side of the star here. Okay, we need to... Uh, Let's go here, see if maybe now we can see some of this stuff. Okay, cool. We got just far enough out of it. So now we just need this to give it to me. Come on. Nope. I'm having a hard time seeing the filter down there with the star in the way. Still nothing there. What was that? I like it when they look golden like that. It's kind of kind of interesting to look at. Still no features there. System scan complete. What is this? I didn't realize that there was a water world there. I don't remember. I didn't wasn't paying attention to the filter list. I think part of it was just because the star was making it very difficult to see anything. So let's get our uh, super cruise assist turned on, so it will guide us in towards the planet, and off we go. <clears throat> I have to say, I really wish that <clears throat> I lived in a time where I could do this for real. Could you do imagine actually sitting in a ship like this and flying around the galaxy in the not just flying around the galaxy, but even just flying around the solar system, our even our just our solar system this way, being able to just kind of compress compress the space around you and just zoom towards these planets like this. I'm a big fan of the show uh, The Expanse, and even that would make it to where, you know, traveling around the solar system would be far, far more reasonable than it is now. Even if you just travel, if, even if you just have travel at a 1G acceleration, you could get everywhere within in the solar system within a month. And that would be insane. And, you, you know, you'd have, you'd have artificial gravity the whole way and stuff like that. We just need a propulsion system that would allow us to do that. I tell you what, I'd be one of the first people volunteering to go into space if that was an option. I've been a space per I've been a space nerd my whole life. I mean, I 
I don't even know. I've Star Trek, Star Trek for the most part. Star Wars is cool, but it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit less. It's more science fantasy than it is science fiction. One of the things I liked about Star Trek is it was mostly based off of you know science, science in general, science, really good scientific theory. At least Next Generation and later was. The uh, the original series started off kind of just out there, <laughs> as far as like how the how the how the warp drive and all that stuff worked. They came up with a new. They came up with a re really good standardized system for the next generation and the later and the later shows. Okay, we gotta get over here, get close enough, get these scanned. We are at the twenty minute mark though, so we're probably gonna want to go ahead and find ourselves a landing spot. And sticks. All right, so we'll get out of this. Not what I meant to do. We're looking for that. We'll head over to the closest planet, which or the closest landable body, which of course is behind us. So let's get turned around. We'll go get landed, and then we'll be done with this episode. Heading most of the way back to the star. That's unfortunate. But at least we'll be relatively close. Ideally, it'll give us a nice, uh, pretty view as we uh, hop down into the next system, or hop down into the planet, log off, have a nice, pretty exiting. Oh, I'm gonna pop the throttle back up. Have a nice little uh, exiting, uh, a beautiful exit view as we say goodbye for the day. Just need to get over there. Getting out of the gravity well of the planet takes a little while, so you're gonna watch as we slowly accelerate on our way over there. Sometimes I will put a cut in for uh, moving between planets, especially if I feel like it's going to take a little bit, but 800 light seconds shouldn't really take that long, even if we are slowly accelerating out of the gravity well of that water world we were just in. We just need to get close enough, and then we can find a place to land on the planet, and then that's it. It would be really nice if we got to the point where they had full-on atmospheric planets, but to be honest, I'm not sure how they would implement that without making it so that, uh, you know, they had full-on ecosystems and stuff because most of those planets where you would want to land on them would probably have some kind of a full-on atmosphere, a full-on ecosystem if they're going to have the kind of atmosphere that would totally block out the sky during the daytime and stuff. <clears throat> I can't imagine you're going to have that kind of an atmosphere without a biosphere of some kind. So they would have to do an they would have to do a complete, um, pretty much a complete expansion to make that work. At least I would think so. We'll get over here, find a buy, find the uh, find the Terminator, so we can land as usual with the star as close to the horizon as we can get it. <clears throat> Ideally, we'll be able to find a flat spot to land on, but who knows? Okay, let's get the Super Cruise Assist turned off so that it doesn't automatically orbit us. And we'll kind of head off in this direction so we can be as quick as we can about getting around to this side of the planet. And then down we go. So ideally, this is going to be a nice little spot here for us to land. down. I hate the way that they, that they make it so that you can't like slow, you can't pull the throttle back and have the ship recover from going too fast. You have to pull up and away and do crazy maneuvering to fix that. Not a fan. Enjoy the glide down to the body, and we'll get the landing gear down, get ourselves set down, hop out of the ship, and get ourselves a nice view of the star, hopefully, and then that'll be it. Just go straight down, I guess. We 
Should be able to go. This looks like a relatively flat spot that we could land on. Try to make sure I don't run into it. All right. It's a very bright star. The light shafts coming off of it are pretty, pretty intense. Okay, down we go. All right, well, hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click that like button so the YouTube algorithm knows that you did and sends the video out to as many people as possible. Please continue subscribing because the more subscribers we get, the more fun we're going to have because more people will be along for the ride and we can uh, talk about it and all that cool stuff. Uh, channel memberships are available for those of you who have an interest in supporting the channel. It will give you early access to all of my content in addition to several other perks. So be sure to click that join button, check out the list of perks that are available for that, and decide if any of those are right for you. Again, thank you very much for your time. Hope you guys enjoyed the flight, and I'll see you for the next one.